Kick turns are an important part of moving uphill in the mountains, and there are different techniques that can be used in different conditions. I'm going to show a few different techniques, and which one you use may vary on your flexibility as well as what the snow's like that you're, that you're traveling on. When you're setting up a kick turn, it can be a good idea to walk a few steps past where you actually want to turn. That will allow you to leave the kick turn after it's complete without having to go at a steep angle from your track. Now, in these conditions where there's soft snow, this is a great spot to demonstrate a type of kick turn that doesn't require me moving this ski really uphill. So you can see what I did as I started by sliding downhill. I've got my ski edge against my boot. Then I'm going to bring it out to the side and I'm just going to shove that ski tail down into the snow. Now, the main advantage of this is that my feet are close together. So the amount of energy it takes to transfer the load onto this new foot is pretty minimal. I shift over, I lift this ski out. Notice my ski edge is once again up against my boot so I can get that ski tip around and I set it in the snow. Another technique, if the snow surface is hard or frozen and you can't shove your tail in, when you're setting up your turn, still bring that ski downhill. Again, notice this foot is down slope of the foot I'm standing on. I can bend my knee if I need to. And when I pull the ski up, I can just grab it with my pole and bring it to here. Now, how close you can get your, your feet it's going to depend a little on your flexibility. The closer you can get them, the less energy it takes to transfer the weight. But you don't want to do something that's going to tweak a knee. So once I've got a spot that I'm comfortable with, I shift the weight, bring that ski downhill, and bring it around. When I'm setting up a kick turn, if possible, I want to make sure that I'm not going to slide backwards. To set up this third kind of turn, I want to make sure that my poles are out of the way of the kick. I'm going to swing this foot forward and flip the ski tip around. So that foot goes forward and around. That makes sure that this tail ends up over on this side. Once I've got that foot, I can put the poles in front of me. And then as close as I can get my feet, that's going to save efficiency. Again, if flexibility is an issue, they might be farther apart. They might be farther apart uphill or farther out here. When I transfer the weight, I want to make sure that I've got a stable stance with this one. I don't want it to slip. Then, same as before, I can bring that ski around. There are a few common arrows and kick turns that can burn a lot of energy, and we'll show you some ways to avoid those. One of those is something we call the V of Doom. What happens in that situation is regardless of how you've started your turn, you end up with your skis in a V downhill. So that can occur with a kick to a wide stance. You can see that this is a pretty uncomfortable situation. Best case, I'm gonna have to use a lot of energy to get out of here. Worst case, I might end up sliding down the hill. In order to avoid the V of Doom, I need to make sure that my ski tail flips around and is on this side of my stance. Whether I'm doing a kick forward, I want that to be true, or if I'm doing this trick, I need to make sure I use my ski pole to get my ski around. Another common issue happens in the middle of the turn. So you've set yourself up, you're getting your turn ready and now the tip of this ski won't come out of the snow. If you end up trying to fix it by moving your ski uphill, you're going to burn a ton of energy to get that ski around. So if you find yourself in that situation, what you want to do is drop that leg down the slope. Bend your knees. You might need to drop a heel. Bring that ski in until it touches your boot and then you can bring it around. If your ski tip is stuck in the snow, 
and you're trying to get it out by bringing your edge into your boot and sliding it back, it may still be stuck under there. In that case, you can give a little kick and bring it around. Practice these skills so that you're comfortable with them and they can serve you really well when you travel in the backcountry. In easy conditions, it can help you move more efficiently. And if you have a heavy pack or it gets steep or frozen when you're skinning, then it can help you be safer and more relaxed, not as stressed out when you're skinning uphill.